Hey everybody, it's Peter here with GoodyReader.com and today we have another comparison video for you guys. We have the Google Nexus 7 versus the Nook HD. Little bit of a weird comparison, but we had enough requests for it so that we're going to show you guys. This, go the won't, this, this review won't be really that relevant to Canadians or anyone outside the US and you will see why later. It's because this tablet, the Nook HD, can't really work outside the US. Starting with the Nook HD, we have a 1440 by 900 LCD capacitive screen, which is a little bit bigger than the 1280 by 800 on the Google Nexus 7. We have a 1.3 dual core processor on the Nook, 1.3 quad core processor on the Nexus, so it's running a little bit faster, double the core, double the Double, not double the speed, but double the cores. Both have a gig of RAM. They both, uh, this is a 32 gigabyte Nook Nexus 7, and the Nook is 16 gigabyte. But the good thing about the Nook is that it comes with a slot for micro SD cards. They both have Wi Fi, they both charge in about four or five hours, and they both last around nine or ten hours. Looking at the Nook HD first, I'm not really a big fan of the way it looks. I like the old style Nook that's almost squared off with a little chiseled edge with a um, like a little accessory loop in the corner. This one kind of breaks the mold. Uh, it looks like a bar of soap. I'm not really happy about the double bezel. You have a screen with a bezel around the screen and then a frame around that. It doesn't really look that attractive. You have the Nook button at the bottom. There are no cameras on this device. On the back, you get this hard rubber, pretty nice material, dual speakers. On the side, you get volume up and down, 3.5 mil headphone jack, microphone, power slash standby button, status indicator light, Nook plug. It's the new Nook uh, uh, port. It looks kind of like an uh, Apple last generation port. And you get the SD card slot. I should say I'm not really a big fan of the look, but at least it doesn't look like this. This is as boring as you can possibly get. It's black screen, black bezel, no buttons. Uh, pretty cookie cutter compared to, uh, you know, the everything else out there. This is kind of just, they're all looking like big oversized cell phones. Not a big fan, but it's about, it's the inside that counts, right? So we have the front facing camera. No buttons on the front. They're all software driven. Really nice back perforated leather-esque look to it, uh, plastic backing, embossed Nexus, volume up and down, power button slash standby, microphone at the top, microphone at the side, so no matter which way you hold it, you actually have two microphones on this, speaker, Asus or, A uh, Asus or Asus branding at the bottom, 3.5 mil headphone jack, and a micro USB for charging and transferring data. During this review, we're going to look at various things like the ebook experience, magazines, and a bunch more media, hopefully some videos, and unfortunately, this is running, they're both running Android, but because this is Barnes & Noble skinned version of Android, and con in conjunction with the fact that you can't uh, sideload your own apps in, we're going to have trouble matching content, but we will do the best we can, and we will try to make a clear comparison between the two devices you see before you. For the majority of this review, we're going to leave it in portrait mode because magazines, newspapers, uh, comics, and books just look better in portrait because that's the way we read things, eight and a half by 11, right? So what we're going to do first is look at reading. Because this has Google and this doesn't, we're going to have to use what this has, which is Nook, which it is, I should say. There we go. And we're going to use Nook app on here and choose the same book. So by default, this is what they both look like. Yes, you will see that this is a truer white than that. Um, it's the way it shows up on camera, and it's kind of the way it shows up on the naked eye. What you can do to change that is click in the middle, then you have 
text, you can change the text here. So you can change everything live, font size, line spacing, margins, font style, and you can actually change between not one, not three, but six different themes, which not a lot of other tablets have. Brown, off-white, white, gray, stone, black, so forth. So, really useful. On here, we have text change. Kind of looks like this. Not quite, because this is a Nook, and this is running Nook right now. Let's change the margin, because that's bothering me. Space it out. And we'll keep it on day. And we'll change it to something else. So there you go. Page turns are pretty much exactly the same. You can see here that it's kept all of our highlights and notes from the last time we read. I'll show you how to do that. You get a page turn animation on Nook on the Google Nexus. However, you do not get that on the Nook itself. Pressing and holding will start up a highlight on the Nook. Same with the Barnes & Noble app on the Nexus. From there, you can highlight, add note, share quote, look up, or find in book. And you have highlight, add note, look up, or find as well on here. So we can add a highlight, or we can add a note, add note. Good. Let's take this time to look at the keyboard. The keyboard on the Nexus takes up about, I would say, 35, maybe 40% of the screen, whereas the keyboard on the Nook just takes up a little tiny bar at the bottom. I think I like this a little bit better. How, uh, mind you, this is Android, and you are allowed to sideload apps in here, so you can change this keyboard to thousands of other keyboards. Uh, you can probably even find a Barnes & Noble keyboard or an Apple keyboard or whatever you want on, on there. So go ahead and save that. And page turns are pretty much the exact same speed. There's not going to be any major differences. We're not working with 800 megahertz processors here. These are both dual core. They're both up to spec. So we have current models here. Magazines are something that is becoming more and more popular on tablets every day. Here we have a magazine purchased from Barnes & Noble on the Nook and a synchronized account from the Barnes & Noble app on the Nexus. So we can't show Google Play magazines because this has it and this doesn't. So we're showing this. Um, it is the exact same magazine and we'll let you guys look at that for a second. You can see that the colors are a little bit different. Remember the resolution is higher on the Barnes & Noble Nook HD so keep that into consideration when you guys are making your decisions here. Page turns have animations, whereas they just slide on, uh-oh, Kindle Fire, let's get that off the screen, oh no, uh, whereas they just slide on the Google Nexus, they have a full peak kind of thing on the Nook HD. Now if you'll notice something, if you tap in the middle on both, you get your quick view, quick navigate. You can go into article view, which is actually condensing what you see here. And you can see you can just scroll, so it's a very easy way to read the articles rather than magazine view. No such thing on this. So unfortunately, we can't do that. Let's tap in the middle again. You have brightness, but that's it. We also have scrapbooking. This is an awesome feature I wish was on a different tablet than the Nook HD, because I'm not the biggest of fans of the Nook HD. Let's click scrapbooking. What it does is takes that page out of the magazine or newspaper you're looking at and you can add it to your scrapbook and then what you can do 
is go to library. Go down to my scrapbooks. And there's the page we ripped out. This is not part of this magazine. As you can see, this is pages of different magazines from different purchased magazines that we have all in a row here. So this is an awesome feature. It's called scrapbooking. This is everything we've ever taken out of different magazines into one scrapbook we've labeled Goody Reader. So that is an awesome feature. Not a lot you can do on the Nook synchronized account application with a magazine, but you can do things like pinch and zoom to a certain degree. It's just okay on here. I think the magazine experience on the Nook towers over that of the uh, Nexus 7. Now we had to cheat this a little bit because on the Nexus we can download Comixology, Marvel, or even just drag and drop and uh, transfer from your computer comics into this. Whereas on Barnes & Noble there isn't a Marvel app, there isn't a Comixology app, there's no real applications you can download and you can't sideload in any applications even though it is Android. So we had to purchase this using a US Visa credit card and a US address directly from Barnes & Noble and then tried to find the same comic on both devices using different methods and we have. So we'll let you guys look at that. Uh, looks like the colors are a little bit more vibrant on the Nexus but the picture is a little more crisp on the in HD, but we'll leave it up to you guys to decide. So you get page turn animations on the Nook. You do not get that on the Nexus. You can double tap to go into uh, guided view. You cannot do that on the Nexus because this isn't using Marvel apps or Comixology or anything. This is just what we've downloaded. In fact, it still says buy now, so. You do get pinch and zoom capabilities on both. So let's go ahead and try to zoom in on the same thing here. You can't endlessly zoom like you can on the Microsoft Surface, but you can zoom pretty well. And on the Nook, you, you just can't zoom in any more than that. So all in all, it's really not that great of an experience on the Barnes & Noble Nook for graphic novels. Not only is the selection pretty much non-existent, there's not much you can do with the comics to really cater it to your liking. You can just pretty much read it as is. Otherwise, um, I guess you're out of luck. Uh, what you can do to purchase content on here, you can actually visit our sales partner, Shoppy Readers. They actually do have uh, prepaid Visa credit cards for you to purchase. And these are uh, crucial to anyone using Barnes & Noble or Amazon products outside of... Can, uh, outside of the USA because they actually give you access to the Barnes & Noble Marketplace and the Amazon Marketplace. So we took that opportunity to show you guys the video, but along with that, let you listen to the audio because there isn't really too much differences between these devices um, in terms of audio, and we can't download the same content on both because on this we have no way to get music, and on the Nexus we actually have uh, Google Play Music. So, um, I mean, these things are just so different that they're both Android but once again this is running a skinned version so you're not really going to get the same access to things as you would on a kind of bare bones device. The last thing we're going to look at here is content distribution. Now we have Google Play on the Google Nexus 
And we have Barnes & Noble App Store on the Nook HD. Now, don't let this fool you. You can't really buy anything off of the App Store on Barnes & Noble. Reason being, unless you're in the USA, you can't actually get access to any of it unless you go and buy a prepaid Visa card from our partner, Shopee Readers. Now, on Google Play, you have apps, games, mo uh, books, movies, and so forth. So we're going to go click on games first. We have apps on here. This is what it looks like right out of the gates. Really nice. Everything's squared off. You get uh, things that are on special, things that are kind of deals. You can swipe left and right to look at top paid, top free, top grossing, top new paid, etc., etc. On the uh, Barnes & Noble Nook HD, um, it's not laid out that well. You can tell how many apps actually show up on the screen, only about three and a half, three and a third. They don't make use of the screen very well. It's a very boring looking experience. Things scroll left and right, sure. Um, popular apps, once again, terrible way of displaying them. Everything cut in half, whereas this is very organized and very easy to understand. This is kind of just terrible. Go click on a game, for example. So we have Rage of the Gladiator and even though it may or may not look appetizing so you'll it's just a tease unless you're in the states because you can't actually get anything on here and if you're thinking oh let's just sideload it in and download it off wherever you can't because they don't allow you to install applications from unknown sources on this device so this is what it looks like when you go to an app everyone says should make a game looks like this, etc. So you have user reviews, more like this, etc. Whereas on, whereas on uh, the Nexus, you have everything laid out very well, very nicely, very familiar. User ratings are right there. Reviews, more more like this. Users also found. Users also installed, and so forth. Um, all in all, I think the experience on the Nook is. It's a very unattractive app store. Uh, it's not laid out very well. You can't get anything unless you're in the States. Um, it's it, it's just not that great. And uh, on the Nexus, you can actually go to our Goody Reader app store instead of the Google Play store if you'd like because, for example, Nook is not on the Google Play for Canada, so we had to grab this from our app store. So it does come in handy. Wrapping up, Google Nexus 7 is a great device. It is quad-core, it's price-effective, it looks okay, it's a bare-bones experience, but it works, and you have all your Google stuff. You have Chrome, Gmail, books, music, movies, and Play Store. This, in the USA, is a good device. This, outside of the USA, is... I don't want to be too harsh, but it's a pretty useless device. You can't really do anything with it. You actually can you you can utilize a visa uh, a USA Visa card and a USA address to actually download and rent movies. But although they'll charge you, you can't actually watch them. We have two movies here that we have purchased, and it won't even let us watch it because. issue with your account. No matter what you do, unless you change your IP address, which Shopee Readers also has, our sales partner, they have um, uh, ad IP address change packages starting from $12.95 a month. You can actually utilize that to get all of the service that Barnes & Noble has to offer. Otherwise, if you use a credit card on here, it actually won't even allow you to view any of the content, like the newspapers, for example. So, all in all, this versus this, sure, quad-core processor, higher resolution screen, no expandable memory, uh, SD card up to 32 gigabytes. This isn't to choose a winner or a loser, but we have had a lot of people in the States say, 
you know, what tablet should I buy? If you are in the USA, I can see you buying this device. It has a very good resolution. It has a lot to offer. Uh, you get locked into the Barnes & Noble ecosystem, but in the States, you get access to it. If you're outside the USA, anywhere else in the world, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Norway, I recommend getting the Google Nexus because it is truly international. You can do anything with it. You can download things anywhere. The content may change a little bit on the Google Play Store based on where you're located, but you can still get it and you can install applications from third party sources. We were going to show you games, but we didn't feel that high graphic racing games or Sonic games really stood up to Emma Easter Day Spot the Difference or Ninja Popcorn. So that is a reason we didn't show games. Um, anyways, leave a comment on this video. If you like this video, like us, let us know if we can change anything. Go to youtube.com slash goodyreader for over 560-ish videos. You can go to apps.goodyreader.com to get all your applications for Android, BB10, and BlackBerry Playbook. And everyone from Goody Reader, this is Peter.